What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 most successful TNA to WWE transitions. Now, I didn't watch too much TNA um, back back in the day. I didn't watch it, but I did know, you know, saying some of the guys that uh, were in WWE obviously went over to TNA at some point. And then some of the guys that were homegrown in TNA or, you know, really... Uh, really, you know, built up the TNA brand, ending up coming over to WWE at some point. So we're going to check out some of these moments. A lot of these I probably didn't even know. Should be a great video. Appreciate all love and support, man. Uh, shout out to What well Coach uh, Culture Wrestling. Uh, link to the original video will be down below. I can go check know that out. AJ Styles and Samoa Joe left TNA and totally smashed it. There are other stars that have done this as well, but the real litmus test was making it to WWE and see how they got treated. It was a total roller coaster. Which is why today many have forgotten about some truly awesome jumps. I am Simon mm -hmm. from What Culture, and this is the 10 most successful TNA to WWE transitions. Number 10 Abyss. That's right. Despite never appearing as his masked character in WWE, Chris Park has been super successful in the promotion. You just never see him. This is because mm. he was hired as a producer in 2019 oh. and by all accounts is doing a great job. That must be true too as sometimes people can come and go in that role. It's a bit like an open door policy. But Park is now a mainstay. It's quite Let's lovely go. to see. You may recall there was a tease of some on-camera action when he was briefly AJ Styles' statistician back in 2020 that didn't go anywhere mostly as it was during the pandemic where nothing made sense i still hope one day he can have the match he deserves even if it comes and goes as a memory that dude gave everything to tna and it sounds like it's a similar situation now he has smashed it number nine That's pretty cool. night another one that goes under the radar eli i didn't know that I actually did not know he uh, he <laughs> came from TNA. Did not know that. Drake, as he was known in TNA, won the world title, the tag titles, and he was the king of the mountain. He was also well known for his character work outside didn't this know bubble, that. and wow. most people assumed he would go on to bigger and better. Even though he hasn't won a championship in WWE, Which, apart from a brief run with the million dollar belt down in NXT, hopefully he had changes. such a good run there, and main roster call-up was always on the cards. And sure, it started oddly when he was recast uh. as Max Dupree, the leader of the wonderful Maximum Mel Mod, Models. But ever since Triple Eight switched him back to the more familiar LA Knight, the dude has been on fire. You don't get fans shouting, yeah, by fluke. He's yeah. a prominent character now thanks to his feud with yeah, Bray I mean, Wyatt and having a segment that. with The Undertaker. Plus, he's reliable. I hope now the spooky wooky stuff is done, we don't forget about him. The man has so much more to give. Plus, he's damn entertaining. Please, please give him a push. Somehow, some way this year. Please. Please. Number eight, Selena Vega. This is nuts because Didn't right now that. Selena Vega well. is only 32 <laughs> years old, and yet she made her TNA debut in 2011. Wow. Kind of being ahead of the game. Rosita, as she was known then, won the TNA Knockouts tag titles pretty quickly too, and started the Mexican America faction alongside Hernandez and Anarquia. So she arrived and did everything. Why not? She was soon picked up by WWE where she was teamed with Andrade as he plowed forward wow. to become the NXT champion when they got called up to the main roster. Naturally. Sadly, neither of them were ever booked in the same way under Vince McMahon. And yes, no. there was some controversy with the term independent contractor that led to Vega being released. But talent never sleeps. And before you knew it, she was back. That resulted in a Queen of the Ring victory where Selena was able to strut around in a crown. Whereas in 2022, she became the mouthpiece for Legado del Fantasma on SmackDown. It was a pretty good effort. It also means Vega has proven herself as a valuable part of the That's roster. That's crazy. And long may that continue. Number seven, Wes Lee. The Rascals were a very good impact team. WWE saw this too and brought them on board in 2020 as MSK. And almost instantly, they were pushed. They won Damn. the Dusty Rhodes Classic and the NXT Tag Titles pretty quickly. Plus, they got to hang out with Matt Riddle for a while. Now, that does sound pointless, but actually, it carries a lot of weight. WWE wanted to make sure there was a spotlight on them. It hit a bit of a stumbling block when Nash Carter was released following a controversial yeah. online happening with his ex-wife. And everyone then thought this spelled doom for Wes Lee. Mm -hmm. Even more so when he was stripped of the tag team belts and vanished from television. This is the issue of being one part of a pairing. However, rather than fade away, Lee weathered the Storm returned in 2022 mm -hmm. and ever since has raised his game no end. As I speak to you, he is still the North American champion and the quality of his matches, they absolutely rock. It Which also awesome. to tell the audience he has what it takes as a single star. When that Raw or SmackDown 
call comes, there's no reason he can't fit in there too. He as long as they book him correctly. Hopefully Triple H can help with that. <laughs> He's got it. So it has been a crazy ride since those TNA days, but when all is said and done, kind of feel like he's going to be more than okay. Number six, Bobby Roode. As we learned now recently, this I did Bobby know. Roode's many years of throwing himself onto the ground have caught up with him, and he needs back surgery. So straight away, we send him nothing but the best. Ever since he debuted in TNA in 2004, though, he Damn. wasted no time at all. While he started as a pretty cool member of Team Canada, Roode soon went all JBL on us as he played a rich boy heel before jumping again into beer money, one of the most successful teams in TNA history. It all continued when he and James Storm used that to ignite an awesome feud which culminated when Bobby became the world champion. This was really good TV. It's why Triple H and NXT eventually came calling and along with his glorious mm -hmm. theme song, it all carried on. I mean, he Super beat Shinsuke NXT, Nakamura to win NXT. the NXT title before losing it to Drew McIntyre who was basically following the same blueprint. And sure, Drew has been pushed harder but Rude was able to find a place for himself alongside Dolph Ziggler and I tell you, when he is back with Triple H control Controlling his fate, I would watch this space. Number five, Samoa Joe. Hopefully, whenever he does come back, he can get a, a, a solid, solid run under Triple H's rule. We mentioned him in the possible. intro, and we must do it here too. Samoa Joe is an all timer. For he mm -hmm. smashed it in TNA, he smashed it in WWE, and if Vince McMahon had understand the man more, I've no doubt he would have become world champion. Remember that? <laughs> I may make a, a video about that. I may actually do a video of Vince McMahon's blunders on people that should have been world champions and when they should have been world champions. Because uh, there's a few people that I just, I just felt like it only made sense for them to be world champion at some point. And Samoa Joe is one of those people for sure. That awesome match with Brock Lesnar, Joe can hang with anyone. He was also only one of five men who won the TNA Grand Slam as he just picked up titles for fun. And don't mm -hmm. forget when NXT got him, he was offered an amazing deal. Sure, you can perform here, but you could also sell your own merchandise and do other bookings. He was mm -hmm. a true independent contractor. That didn't last long as WWE realized his value so locked him down full time. And then he just ran through everyone. Yep. He defeated Finn Balor to become the NXT champion. And on his first night on Raw, he got to choke out Seth Rollins. Joe yep. throughout was totally viable as a major threat. He would soon return to NXT where he won the world championship once more when nonsense saw him fired, rehired, and then fired Fire again. again. That should yep. never have happened, but no matter how you look at it, Samoa has found his way no matter the promotion. He's a forever hero as far as I'm concerned. For sure. Never puts a foot wrong. Number four, Xavier Woods. Or this consequences creed well. as he was known in TNA. And sure, he didn't have the success there that others had on this list, but he did have a solid tag team with R-Truth and Jay Lethal and won the tag titles before getting released in 2010. Now that is ridiculous knowing what we know now because WWE picked him up in 2013 and look what he did. Did. Grab the opportunity by the horns, mm -hmm. he never let go. It was an interesting start as he was re teamed with Truth and basically treated like a comedy figure until one fateful night in 2014. Mm -hmm. For he chatted to fellow friends Kofi Kingston and Big E and they decided to reverse their fortunes, they should come together as the New Day. And do I need to say anything else? No, I do not. Uh, the New Day, that they catapulted them. They weren't supposed to get as over as they did, but they did. As simple as that. They were not supposed to be as over as they were, but they got over to the point where cereal was made for these guys and merchandise was just, just, just flying off the shelves. I don't know what to tell you, man. Ever since, they have just been on a tear, winning title after title, and cementing the group as sure fire hall of famers. Even after almost a decade, they still find new oh, ways to dope. entertain me. They rock. Woods was also able to achieve his dream of becoming the king of the ring. So yeah, you can't criticize this. The guy totally gets it. Number three, Mickey James. Definitely Some fans may this. not be aware of this, but while during the second part of her career, Mickey James was very successful in TNA, it's where she kicked it all off too. Debuting in 2002 oh, as Alexis Laurie, she joined she Ravens The Gathering in Group as he went That's after the then dope. NWA heavyweight title. James Mitchell was also part of this and ejected James from the company after hurling a fireball into her face, but there was a reason for this. 
Mickey was going to WWE. It was full mm. step ahead from there as she kicked off that feud with Trish Stratus, which was excellent. And she won the women's world title at WrestleMania 22, which was only her 10th match in the company. It was wow. just the start as Mickey also retired later at Survivor Series and went on to pick up gold on six different occasions. This was also done during a time when the female talent had to fight tooth and nail for proper opportunities. Mm. She's another that will get in the Hall of Fame as soon as she wants it. James is officially a legend. Oh, Number for two, sure. CM Punk. Well, we all forget about this. Mm -hmm. There's a good reason for it. CM Punk is synonymous with Ring of Honor given his track record there. But before all of that, he did indeed pop up in TNA. This actually ties into what we just talked about because, yep, he was in The Gathering too. That's wild. Everyone was flocking to Raven. The irony. Punk would team with him as well alongside Julio De Niro as they had a few decent matches before Ring of Honor decided they didn't want to work with TN anymore, so they shut the door. There's not really much else that can be said because we all know the success CM went on mm -hmm. to have, but if we are plotting his journey, it does indeed go through TNA, so that counts. Which is crazy to, to me, think about it, man. It's my list. The big question is, of course, what Punk does next, but regardless, it will be a big deal as he's a big deal. I wouldn't dare call it, though really is impossible to try and figure out. Number one, <laughs> AJ Styles. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't get this before you clicked play yeah. on this video, you have never watched AJ Styles. Facts. Not only was he the face of TNA and really should have been utilized as such, Styles has just been amazing everywhere. Yeah. He is one of the best ever. The story gets even better because even AJ assumed he would never get to WWE due to how they saw wrestling. And yet he did arrive and thanks to his skill mm -hmm. level, became the world champion. This is just the coolest and reminds you to always bet on yourself. I can't even go through all his TNA accolades as we'd be here all day, but just know he was changing the game and winning as many belts as he possibly could. Without him, I'm not sure Total Nonstop Action hangs around as much as it did. And for fun, just go and pick any match and see what it's like. 99% mm -hmm. of the time, you'll get a banger. He will without doubt go into the Hall of, of Fame eventually, and before then, who knows? Styles is in his mid-40s, but he's still so damn good. He could keep performing for another decade at this rate. It's absolutely fine by me. Know of any other wrestlers that had successful transitions from TNA to WWE? Make sure you let us know in the comments uh, below and then don't forget to... AJ Styles is... He's goaded. What are we talking about? <laughs> Mr. TNA himself coming to WWE and just lighting it up. Lighting it up. Great views. Great matches. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. I know he is part of the... Uh, the um, uh, um, World Heavyweight Championship Tournament, I would not have a problem if AJ Styles is one of the finalists in AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins at Night of Champions. I wouldn't have a problem. I, I, I honestly would not care. I, sign me up. I'm cool if it's Edge, but I'm even better if it's AJ. Because AJ can use that rub. AJ hadn't really been in nothing major. Come back from injury. I'm all for it. Okay. Hell, put it on him. I don't care. It's AJ Styles. He, I don't think anyone would be upset. I know, I think everyone's expecting it to be Seth. But if AJ's the one to win it, they surprise everybody. I don't think anybody would be upset with that. I don't know. I don't understand how you could be. The guy is phenomenal still. So we'll see how that plays out this Friday. But hey, man. Comment down below. Let me know some other uh, TNA to WWE transitions that y'all felt like should have been on this list, man. But I appreciate all the love and support. Guys, shown on the channel, Roll to 150K. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you on the next one. Peace.